everyone, how's it growing? Miss Simon back for another garden lesson. And today we will be learning all about butterflies and moths. Did you know that the main difference between a moth and a butterfly is simply the time of day they're awake? Have you noticed butterflies get all the glory? Well, that's because they're the ones awake during the daytime, whereas moths are awake during the nighttime. But in all reality, butterflies are just day flying moths. Crazy, right? There's a few more differences that we might touch on later, but for now, let's get started on their life cycle. So a life cycle is how an animal starts as a small little thing and grows into an adult. So butterflies and moths, they start out as an egg. So right over here, you'll see this is where it all begins. A female butterfly or moth will lay an egg on a leaf and this egg is going to then hatch and out of it will come the larva. Now larva is a big fancy science word but it's really just the caterpillar stage and the caterpillar's job is to eat, eat, eat. That's its main goal is to store up energy so that it can get ready to form a pupa. This right here is stage number three. This is the pupa. It's also known as the chrysalis or sometimes the cocoon. Depending what kind of butterfly or moth it is, it's either gonna have a silky case, which makes it a cocoon, or it's not gonna have that silky case and it'll be a chrysalis. Um, once the pupa um, attaches itself here, it's gonna spend some time growing and changing from this larval stage and then into the final adult stage, the butterfly or moth. So out of here is where the butterfly or moth will hatch. It's going to attach itself and kind of hang upside down for a little while to dry out its wings. And then from there, it's ready to fly away um, to find a mate and then eventually lay eggs on the plant again. So why are we talking about this? Well, it's super important and relevant to the garden. And I'm gonna show you um, some caterpillars that I found in action and even a couple pupas I found living on our cabbage plants. All right, let's check it out. If you look closely at our cabbages, you can see there are holes in the leaves. These were caused by herbivores or things that eat plants and I needed to get to the bottom of it and find out who was munching our leaves. And as I looked closer, I found some cabbage butterfly larva and pupa, which you can see here. The worm-like things are the caterpillars, also known as larva, and the cases are the pupa. So first comes the larva, they'll eventually also look like the pupa. Um, and so what I had to do is find these and remove them from our cabbages so they weren't further damaged. Here's a closer look at the cabbage butterfly larva and pupa. You can see one of the pupas is twitching. It's very much alive and transforming into a butterfly. And those small green circles are the larva's poop. They eat and poop constantly. Most butterflies and moths like to drink nectar. The nectar is found inside a flower along with pollen. So when a butterfly or moth lands on a flower, that powdery dust called pollen is gonna get stuck to their furry legs. And as they fly from one flower to the next, they'll drop off some of that pollen. And that process then causes pollination, which helps the plant to then make seeds, which are starting to form here. This is calendula and it, those are forming calendula seeds. Here are some uh, dried calendula seeds. So without the butterflies and the bees, all these pollinators, um, we wouldn't be able to get seeds or even fruit. So butterflies are a friend of the garden. Same with moths. Fun fact, not all butterflies and moths just drink nectar. In fact, some of them will even feed on dead carcasses. Yeah, dead animals. Um, pretty gross, but it's good to know because if you want to be a butterfly researcher one day and you really want to attract a certain species to your trap, you gotta make it out of stinky stuff. Some people ferment fruit to attract the butterflies or even use human poop or pee to bring the butterflies to them. Crazy. If you wanna support the pollinators in our community, it's really great to plant native plants in your yard or garden. Um, 
That provides food and habitat for our butterflies, our bees, all our insects, and especially California native milkweed helps to support the monarch butterflies.